Welcome to Jackson First Baptist Church and a journey through Bethlehem. Christmas is such an important time of year, one that is more than just gift giving, beautiful lights, or even gathering with families. Christmas is important to us because it's the celebration of the birth of our Savior. Again, welcome to a journey through Bethlehem. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. How will this be, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. For nothing will be impossible with God. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds returned in glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Over 33 years of his life, Jesus Christ lived a sinless life, fulfilled prophecy, healed the sick, walked on water, raised the dead, all proving that he was God incarnate. Prior to his death, Jesus sat with his disciples for the Passover. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day, when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they came into the place that was called the skull, where they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do and they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. 
This was also an inscription over him, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railing at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say unto you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It is now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light faded and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they had went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the apostles. Yes, he was resurrected from the dead. He is alive. He appeared to Mary, then to the disciples, even telling Thomas to touch the scars in his hands and in his side, causing them to believe. In all, over 500 people saw him. Some even ate with him after his crucifixion and resurrection. But why? What was the purpose of all that we've seen? You see, the purpose of his birth, his life, his crucifixion, and even his resurrection was to save us, save us from our sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, yes, the gift of God, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you are asking right now how to receive this eternal life, first remember all that you have seen and heard. Everything that is necessary for you to receive eternal life has already been done by Christ. He poured out his blood for all your sin, and upon himself he willingly suffered the wrath of God. All you must do is receive it. If you will confess your sin, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For anyone who calls on the name of God shall be saved. We understand it is a lot to digest and that you might have questions. If you do, please don't hesitate to contact us through our website, jacksonfbc.com or through Facebook, we'd love to talk with you. If you don't have a church family, why don't you just join us this Sunday at 9.30 or 11 o'clock for worship, and Merry Christmas.